well as the Iron Hands EX prize is so awkward here for Kenny. Yeah, that is absolutely not what you're looking at, even for a second. So we do see Elizabeth starting there with Ooh. a Mincino. And we see Carmine. We've seen Kieran on the stream so far. This is our first Carmine, but all losing your ace spec energy. That is not where you want to be. We attached jet energy to the active. Why did we not attach the legacy? <laughs> Surely that was the best option to attach. Okay. I want to take advantage of the minus one in the prize cards. I'm so surprised that was the first action, to be honest with you. And Elizabeth is just figuring out uh, they might be a lefty and trying to put the, <laughs> the disc up on a different side. But we figured things out here and we are having an early deck search. We do, of course, need a Lugia V on this board. And Elizabeth is already going to search that out pretty proactively here. Yeah, I'm watching Elizabeth's energy here. There's like, what, is it four, three or four in the prizes? Couple yeah. got discarded from the early Carmine. Now we've got another one coming in from that Ultra Ball. Like, I, I know that Lugia plays a lot of energy, right? But there does kind of come a point where You've Ooh. lost a lot of energy. Now we see the retreat into the flutter, man. Very cheeky. Very cheeky against a lost zone deck. Yeah, this is a heads up play, to be honest with you. Possibly these players sat next to each other earlier on in the day. So Elizabeth is, might be aware that Kenny is playing that lost zone deck. It's inevitable at this stage in the tournament. You've probably sat next to your opponents at that stage. And we see the early Arsenal from Kenny here and we'll still search out the Comfe by the looks of things. So Kenny might have a route towards Iron Bundle here because that will be required. I think the Iron Bundle's prized, Joe. Oh, it's prized? Yeah, I think if I remember uh -oh. correctly, oh, I think right. the one-off yeah. Iron Bundle might actually be prized here. And of course, with the Hisuian yeah. Heavy Ball, yeah, right yeah. at the top there, I did see that correctly. That's really mean, frankly. Oh my God, and this really helps Elizabeth. She's kind of got the flutter main in the active and Kenny's sitting there being like, I'll just get my, I'll get my iron bundle. I'll find his prize, right. <laughs> I'll go and get my Asuian. Are you kidding me here? <laughs> yeah, so possibly Kenny has to have a different strategy. You can still use maybe prime catcher early. That might also be coming into Kenny's thinking. But has Chorus' experiment at least. So we can begin fueling this lost zone. Yeah, you're going to get a couple cards into the Lost Zone. It's so awkward when you can't use Comfey. Comfey is such a good card for getting cards into the Lost Zone while also drawing. It's so annoying when you don't have access to it. it frankly, it's the whole reason you play the deck. <laughs> and Elizabeth might be playing Fluttermane for just other reasons, to be honest with you. Things like the Iron Thorns EX and just getting this extra benefit and finding the utility of this card on turn one. So crucial and could be causing huge headaches for Kenny here. Yeah, it's a card we expect to see in Gardevoir, for instance. It's a deck we expect to see in these ancient box decks. Lugia, not so much, but it's the kind of card that can be played as a cheeky little one-off in anything, just to give you those extra little percentages in certain matchups. Kenny, though, he's got himself a nest ball here. So what are we getting? It's a Radiant Greninja, so there's going to be a little bit of extra draw coming out. Yeah, we can still at least draw with a Radiant Greninja. Doesn't help you with your loss zone, but we do need to see more cards here. It's unlikely that Kenny can launch an attack with this Fluttermane in the active position. There's no real way that we can get to seven. So we probably are just having a setup turn here. Yeah, Cramorant is not going to do anything against Fluttermane because, of course, that ability, even if you get to four in the Lost Zone, that ability is turned off. You would need something like a Lost Vacuum on your own Artisan, and then you would go, oh, I st still can't attack anyway. That's a little disappointing. Kenny just kind of pass things over. We know Elizabeth does have Iono in hand, so she should be able to refresh here. Not sure if the early Carmine was able to discard any Archeops for her. So she may still have a bit more work to do towards getting the a turn two summon here, but is at least seeing six, six fresh cards whilst also hand disrupting Kenny, who played a Colorus. And even though the Lost Zone players don't always have large hand sizes, because they're keeping the best cards every yes. time you use a Colorus, you know they're holding on to some treats. Yeah, you know it's going to hurt them after that Colorus. We do see the flip coming in here for capturing Aroma. It is a Tails. Which is going to grab a basic. It's unfortunate because Elizabeth was holding on to one Archeops and an Ultra Ball. Oh no, that's really yeah. gutting. <laughs> what you really want here, we want to get an Ultra Ball, double Archeops. That is the dream. Ooh. Get both the Archeops in the discard, and we do see an Iron Hands. And it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Straight Never away mind. sacrificed to the Ultra Ball. Does Elizabeth retreat this Fluttermane possibly and read the wind here? Or is she still going to sit behind? 
this frustrating Pokemon. How's the rest of her hand looking at the moment? What's she got in terms of other options? V-Star in hand, Boss's Orders in Serena. So she could be just taking the turn off here. Still the option to use Artisan if you want to get another Minchino down. No, just going to leave this Midnight Fluttering in the active position. She knows it's slowing Kenny down quite a bit here. Passing over, here comes a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Going to get Kenny a couple of new basic Pokemon with 70 HP or less. Going to go down straight onto the bench. Looks like we are finding... Well, oh, Manaphy. there's the Manaphy, and we also see a second Comfey there. Their Fluttermane is still in the active. Elizabeth left at their end. Look, I think you really need to use your Comfey. <laughs> so rather than trying to get a little bit of extra tempo with Lugia and read the wind, I'm going to just guess that this is going to slow you down enough. Yep. Essentially, the harm I'm doing to you with Fluttermane is better for me than the benefit I would get from my Lugia's read the wind. Kenny, once again, going to conceal some cards. We see... The Raikou V come to the hand. There's still not a lot going on whatsoever here for Kenny. I see no chorus in there either. You can poke a stop, but not sure which items help you too much at this stage. Are we going to start just manually attaching to this Raikou V perhaps this turn? Are there even any energy left? We see the switch cut into Confei. There's one energy in hand. Yeah. It looks like a water energy, which you really would rather save for Greninja. You are playing four, though. Kenny's playing four, which is slightly more than we usually see in these Lost Zone decks. So it does give you a little extra wiggle room, but it does just look like a pass back to Elizabeth, back to that Fluttermane, which is doing its job, frankly, superbly. Yeah. Now we see the Lugia Revolution, and now it looks like... Serena going to discard that second Archeops for Elizabeth. Love so she it. is ready to rumble. And I just think attacking with Fluttermane is great here, frankly. Yeah, You I'm know down how with disruptive that. it's been for Kenny, and Fluttermane can KO Comfey pretty happily. So this is going to be fantastic for her. Yeah, turn two here for Elizabeth. You get double Archeops. You've got your Lugia V-Star. You can start accelerating a bunch of energy. And frankly, Fluttermane attacks for colorless energy. Yep. Will KO the Comfey. Yep. Gets a couple of cheeky bonus damage counters because, I don't know, that's always fun. Sure. And oh, by the way, you've still only got two cards in the Lost Zone and Comfey is still turned off. It just seems mean-spirited at this stage. <laughs> Kenny really was hoping that Elizabeth maybe had to retreat this Fluttermane for other attackers, but Elizabeth quite happy with the situation right now. Will be also prepping some damage on the Blood Moon Ursaluna, I would imagine. So Elizabeth going to go up in prize cards. I think she's just debating a second Archeops here, perhaps, if there's any reason to attach. Yeah, it's just going to be a missed energy onto the Minchino. I like this. Turning off effects of attacks, and as we know, one of the biggest effects of attacks that a Lost Zone box deck can use is that Sableye. Yeah, Sableye's probably a turn or two away from coming out yet, but absolutely dropping the damage counters, super annoying. Taking away that opportunity is fun. So we do see the KO on the Comfey, and I think you're right there. And actually, two damage counters on the Blood Moon Ursa Luna, really important, because then it's four energy on yeah. Minchino. So it essentially removes a whole energy needed from Chinchino to actually get that KO, because Chinchino does 70 for each uh, special energy on it. So bringing it down to 240 damage, a multiple of 70, that is nice. No, I'm being silly here. <laughs> I think maybe another. Yeah, OK, we need another one. Out with Lugia, maybe, for knocking out later. Okay, fine, yeah. fine, you're right. <laughs> I thought it Either way, it's the best place to put this damage, no doubt, because yeah. everything else you can easily knock out. Kenny, how is he going to find a way around this Fluttermane? With the prized Iron Bundle and Hisuian combo, I feel like you just have to manually attach to something, and Kenny hasn't really been prioritizing that here. Chose not to attach to a Raikou last turn. I'm not sure if they have any draw in the hand either, just this Pokestop. It's so bizarre watching a Lugia deck just sitting behind it's the Fluttermane yeah. and attacking with it. You know, Elizabeth Ooh. went through. Oh, what we've seen, what we've seen, what we've seen. We found Counter Catcher. Oh, Kenny nice. Can finally use Flower Selecting. And we're behind on prizes, so no issue there. Bringing up the Minchino, which is a Ooh, nice found target. Chorus as well. Oh, this is good. And we do have Cramorant on the bench. Cramorant will KO the Minchino, does easily enough damage. We'll take an energy off the board as well. Oh, there's some awkward things there. We've got the Prime Catcher, another Chorus's experiment. You have to take those two. Yeah. Oh. Sacrificed Nest Ball and Lost Vacuum. Lost Not Vacuum, ideal. don't want to lose. Yeah, well, at least we're finally getting somewhere for Kenny. Going to get a response KO on this Minchino with Cramorant by the looks of things. Going to see an Artisan possibly for Kenny here as well. 
weaving in an extra basic. Maybe it's time for just another comfy. Use your flower selectings while you can, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know Elizabeth it seems like a fan of that flood domain in this particular matchup. So I'm not saying she's definitely going to bring it active and attack a bit again, <laughs> but I am saying it's got to be mighty tempting to do so. We have plenty of switching cards, so I think it's an easy choice to just get another comfy in. No, we're going to search the comfy, not uh, use it and just swing with a spit innocently here. Kenny with five cards in the loss zone. Elizabeth going straight back into the flutter main. <laughs> Does that indicate we have a gusting supporter to bring up a lower hit point Pokemon for Elizabeth uh, for Kenny's side of the field here and just keep up with flutter main? Yep, that's exactly what it means, Ross. Oh, I love this. There was an argument you had energy on so you could retreat, but no, you don't want to be doing using it as a pivot. You want to be using it as an attacker, KO and the Comfey. And look, I'm not saying Elizabeth has to keep dropping damage onto the Blood Moon Earth Luna until it's got 210 HP, <laughs> but I am saying it would make me personally feel better if she did. Even down to 220 now would be great. It opens up Lugia V-Star yeah, to absolutely. KO it cleanly, so all helpful stuff. Even just the two damage counters helps with Elizabeth's own Blood Moon Earth Luna, so... The map was always relevant, Ross. We just had to find the right attackers. And there is an argument to put on Cramorant to bring that into range of a Fluttermane as That's well. That's also just very to give true. More, I mean, at this stage, there's a lot of Fluttermane can KO yet. Of course, you're not playing infinite gusting, but you can leave it in the active and make your opponent have to go through it. More missed energy coming onto the board for Elizabeth. Prepping multiple Minchino here. So we can deal with high hit point Pokemon later down the line if required as we continue to lock out flower selecting from Kenny's side of the field. Yeah, flower selecting is pretty important. It's literally the reason why the deck works. Being able to turn it off is big. And sometimes this is what the good players do. They take the one-off Pokemon that's probably even meant for other matchups. And you go, you know what? In this particular game, in this particular match, it's going to work beautifully and it's going to give me a big advantage. And here's the thing. Elizabeth hasn't even done the Lugia thing yet. We haven't seen loads of energy hit the board and lots of big attackers coming in doing big damage. It's literally just been Fluttermane and Elizabeth's taken the first couple of prizes here as well. I think we're just making sure well. of something. Uh, the judges are just debating something right now. So we're just going to probably take a pause in the action and just see what's up. Um, seems like there may have been a missed step at some stage here. I don't necessarily see anything from my end, but we'll try and let you know what happened in that uh, sequence and why we are stopping the game. But it seems like we're just going to take a minute to make sure that there is no broken game states but Kenny back against the wall right now Elizabeth should be going up another prize here and just getting word here Joe name. it seems that Kenny may have inadvertently used Artisan twice ah, during his last turn and that Second is of course of something comfort, yeah. which will affect the game state so the judges are just having a little bit of a look at that and there's a lot goes into it and we're, judges are great so we're going to let them figure that out that is their job our job is talking about the matchup. So, so far, Elizabeth and her Fluttermane is going beautifully. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. Uh, I thought the Fluttermane was here for a different matchup entirely. I thought it was to help out against Iron Thorns EX, which ironically some Lost Zone Box players have teched in this weekend. Uh, uh, but it's just shutting down Comfey beautifully right now. Yeah, it's working. An absolute treat. And the thing is, it's one of those cards where, and we, we see this in card design, right? Cards that have a really good ability that block generally don't have a good attack because if they do, they would be too good. Yeah. So Fluttermane's attack is what I like to call aggressively meh. <laughs> Free energy, 90 to the active, drop two damage counters. It is frankly far from ideal. Yeah. But if you can accelerate energy with something like Lugia, why not? Yeah. And in a matchup like this, you're getting enough to KO the Comfey. The two damage counters aren't exactly necessary, but they're a nice little bonus. And there's enough Pokemon on Kenny's side of the board that are in range of Fluttermane that Elizabeth, I mean, you've got the first couple of prizes here with the potential to take a whole bunch more. And I, I love this. Yeah, it's working so smoothly. You get to bank lots of energy on your bench as well. So you're preparing for future threats. And the Fluttermane is just proving so awkward. One of your main early game attackers is that Cramorant. That's turned off. Yep. You can't get to Mirage Gate because your flower selecting's turned off. So you're left in this situation where we've had to counter catch around it. We still haven't dealt with this Pokemon just yet. And it's still causing huge headaches for Kenny. Yeah, oh, it's all right. 
Maybe when Elizabeth's taking a couple more prizes, maybe Blood Moon Ursaluna can come in. Oh, no. No, not that either. Oh, no. We're not going <laughs> to Mirage Gate to that twice and turn attack, shall we? We're not at that stage, surely. Uh, I'd, I mean, I'd like to think not, but yeah. it's so bizarre seeing, you know, a, a one-off tech like this making such a big difference. And like you say, a matchup that might not even have been the main matchup. Yeah. It was intended to be used in, and then Elizabeth's got all of these options. You know, like you say, that Blood Moon Ursaluna's got 40 damage on it now, yep. so that means that we do have the potential for a Lugia KO for two prizes. And at some point, the actual main attacker in the deck, Chinchino, might be coming out doing a little bit of damage as well. I can't hear what Kenny's saying, but there's some expressiveness <laughs> going on there, Joe. Well, I think the good news is that it's Kenny that's made the error this in this occasion, and they are quite far behind right now. So it may not even be a bad thing that we just move on to the next game anyway, but we will get confirmation of the situation from our judges in a moment. And uh, it looks like they're getting their instructions right now and resolving the game state. So we should be getting back into the action momentarily. Yeah, when we have an update, we will pass it along. We're nice like that. We want to keep you guys as in the loop as we possibly can. And sneakily here, one of the things Elizabeth's been able to do very nicely, her board is looking good. You've got the double Archeops. You've got two Minchino down, mm. each of which has an energy attached. They are ready to evolve and start attacking. We've got that Lugia that is a relevant attacker into something like the Blood Moon Ursa Luna now that it's got four damage counters on it. So when this Fluttermane goes down, and it could still be a turn or two before yeah. it does, Elizabeth's got a bunch of options to transition into, while Kenny is still trying to just get rolling in the game. There aren't that many cards in the Lost Zone, but it does look like there is a Manaphy heading to the active. Yeah. Kenny has drawn for his turn. Yeah. So the resolution was the Comfey that was searched by the Artisan was shuffled back into the deck, and a warning was given to Kenny here. So now we are seeing Kenny once again answer out the Comfey <laughs> that shouldn't have been answered the previous turn coming into play. That's why Kenny has led out the Manaphy in his turn here and still has a lot of work to do. Is at five in the Lost Zone, so a Colrus could get him to Mirage Gate at last, and I think that will be a huge relief for Kenny. Yeah, having Mirage Gate and having access to that extra energy and those other attackers can be a very big deal. Your draw is still massively hurt by not having Comfey, but you have options. There is a Mirage Gate hit off the concealed cards of the Greninja there. So now we've got some options. We need... I think Ooh, Colrus is there. There is Pokestop as well. Kenny can bounce his own stadium and see three cards. Looking to hit some items, of course. Does hit two. That's a pretty nice swing here. Yeah, Lone Sableye hits a discard, but these decks play a lot of Super Odd, full four for Kenny here. So a random Pokemon in the discard is not that big a deal. I think Kenny will be able to go ahead in the prize race this turn with this Colrus and with Water Energy plus Mirage Gate Super Rod in hand. You can use this Radiant Greninja to take out not only the active and finally deal with this pesky Fluttermane, but also start taking out some of these Minchino from Elizabeth here. So yeah. this is working out nicely. And here's the thing, right? That, that, that seems like it's going to happen. Kenny is going to have had a rough start, bad circumstances, and still have taken half his prizes and gone up in the game. Yeah. It's All not a bad place to be, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, this is going to work out just fine, at least because Kenny has accumulated the pieces to work this Radiant Greninja into the mix, especially with this Super Rod grabbing back some energy. Kenny has been using that Concealed cards to cycle through the deck all game, so it's going to reload three of those energy cards and can immediately Mirage Gate them back into play. You can see already, even without Flower Selecting, Kenny has churned through a lot of cards from this deck just by virtue of Chorus and Concealed cards. Yeah, it's taken a few turns to do so, but that's the thing. Flower Selecting is absolutely the engine of a deck. There are other options. Hitting the Colrus has been huge. Had Kenny whiffed the Colrus as well, this game would probably already be yeah. over. But that's just about given him enough speed here to keep in the game. Now Greninja's ready to go. We will need a pivot for the Mana yeah. but that is the switch cart coming down now. And this is going to be a double KO. 90 onto the Flutter main for the KO. Or oh, even wow. both of them in Chino. I don't mind this at all. This is nice. Yeah, Gift Energy is going to get one for Elizabeth. But we're just hoping that the Fluttermane is just less pesky now, I suppose. And there's just less opportunities for Elizabeth to weave it in because Kenny's just going to keep throwing higher hit point Pokemon into the active at this stage. So nice play from Kenny going ahead in the prize race and nullifying some of Elizabeth's threats in the back. 
but of course we can start to see Archeops start loading up, possibly even the Luger at this stage. Yeah, Luger seems a pretty nice attacker. It will take Ooh, out the how many energy do we have left? I told you back oh, at the beginning of the one. game, Joe, the energy was looking a bit dodgy for Elizabeth because she had a bunch of prize and then a bunch hit the discard pile early in the game. We just lost two because I think there was one on each of the Minchino. This is something I've been tracking. I'm not sure she's got enough here. Oh, she just has so many in hand as well. <laughs> I think three in the hand. That also hurts. She does have boss's orders, though, so she can take out another low hit point Pokemon with Fluttermane, which is important. But you're going to have to start manually attaching to this Lugia. I will say right now, the attackers Kenny's got on the board are Blood Moon, Ursa Luna, and Cramorant, neither of which are actually good attackers with Fluttermane turning off their abilities. I mean, maybe there's an option for another Raiding Grid engine next. Just to use Iono. She did just say at the table that Kenny's hand size is way too big right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> eyeing up Luminion V for Iono seems very reasonable. It was a pretty nice Ultra Ball getting rid of Archeops and Archeops. Yep, it is going to be the Iron O. I think this is a good call out. It means you can't really take a knockout this turn. Oh, it's going to be the. Okay, so you can take a knockout this way. Yeah, you can with jet Lugia. energy and cycle two energy to the bottom of the deck if you choose your second Archeops to access them again immediately. This is a cool play. Yeah, I like this one very nicely. And of course, the Lugia should be able to tank a hit. I don't think Kenny's got anything there that can kill the Lugia right now. And then you can kill the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. The question is, do we have Raikou or Iron Hand available for Kenny? Because either of them would be able to reach and get the KO with that lightning weakness. I think the I think Kenny's Raikou is getting shuffled to the bottom. Uh, via this Iono, and I think we just took the Hisuian Heavy Ball off the prizes, if I'm not mistaken. So Elizabeth with a good play here of sending those important cards to the bottom and forcing Kenny to access lots of them. In fact, the hand size is so big, we're going to cut the hand for Kenny here before he sees his three, and Elizabeth gets four cards. And is going to be also knocking out an engine Pokemon, which I think is also really important here, Ross. Yeah, taking out the engine Pokemon is always very, very nice. It means your opponent has got that much more work to do in order to actually recover and get what they want next turn. And the thing is, that is what Kenny's going for. We know that Kenny plays cards that can counter the Lugia. We've got the Raikou and we've got the Iron Hand. Yeah. So Elizabeth is basically going, I really hope you don't have a way. Oh, well, actually, let me make that more difficult for Correct. you. Correct. When you're low on energy, you have to make your attackers go further. And Elizabeth has found a fantastic opportunity to try and weave in this Lugia V-Star. She's also just going to remove lots of these dead cards out of the hand. So I think Blood Moon Ursa Luna has to be one of your closing attackers at this stage. Absolutely. And the thing is, Blood Moon Ursa Luna right now will take out the opposing Blood Moon Ursa Luna yeah. because of those damage counters that were dropped from that Fluttermane earlier on in the game. So. I'm still liking Elizabeth's position here. I know Kenny's ahead on the prizes and has some options, but it seems like Kenny's got to work really hard to get more attackers out and more prizes taken, whereas Elizabeth kind of just seems to have what she needs on the board. I think it kind of boils down to this hand. I know Kenny is basically just holding on to switch cart and then two use. Oh, we definitely need to promote that comfy. We yeah. do. Oh, that's a big pickup. The pal pad could really improve your odds of hitting Colrus from this flower selecting because we need a lot here. We have exactly switch cards and exactly this one flower selecting to help Kenny get any closer here. She just not to Oh, hits wow. a Colrus anyway, does not play pal pad and still hits a Colrus' experiment. That's one of the coolest things about I know. You know that cards are at the bottom and what's yes. in, that's still sort of towards the top of your deck. So even putting multiple Colrus back into the mix there with a pal pad may have actually given Kenny lower odds. So it's a cool play to have paid off by not shuffling your deck, knowing that there were still Colrus remaining. Really yeah. smart play here, and now Kenny has a good opportunity to get one of those basic Pokemon combined with a Mirage Gate here. We still need quite a particular Colrus, but we can work towards a KO of this Lugia here. It's We've at possible. least got a chance here, and it's not a chance we had a minute ago. That Buddy Buddy Poffin certainly has to hit the Lost Zone, right? That was the card. Oh, there I is believe. a Buddy Buddy Poffin in the Lost Zone. Was that there already? Mm. We'll keep track of that, but it's going to be a Colrus either way. I'm pretty sure we didn't play a Buddy Buddy Poffin there, did we? I don't believe Unless that it was we played did. just to shuffle the deck, perhaps. Kenny is going to remove a Poker Stop and a Super Rod. Did we? Oh, we got Raikō and we got Super Rod here. So we Can we get Raikō V into the mix? 
Oh, and if anyone's wondering about the maths, now you add up the bench Pokemon, add one times by four, and add a zero Yo. because of the weakness. And that means we're going to be hitting, what's it going to be? 320. So that is going to be A-OK -okay for the time being. With nothing else there, we're going to be hitting 320 damage because of the weakness. But of course, with the Raikou, you're now wow. actually up to 360. So I think we're going to be easily enough damage if we can get the energy we on. We can, yeah. I said we needed a particular Colrus, and we hit exactly that. We hit Raikou Mirage Gate switch cards from our top five. That's absolutely incredible for Kenny. And it's exactly what Elizabeth was hoping to avoid. So this is another big swing in this game. Kenny will be going down to one prize card this turn. Elizabeth has the Blood Moon Ursaluna response. But then Kenny would be just looking to hunt down a final prize card to win the game. Yeah, some kind of gusting would be absolutely good with her own Blood Moon Ursaluna here. So here comes a Raikou and using that Lightning Rondo doing a huge amount of damage, more than enough to KO the Lugia here. But it does look like we've got a Pal Pad first. I mean, well, do we have any gusting cards in the discard? Because I want gusting cards right now, Joe. Do we still have the Prime Catcher available for Kenny? I don't believe that's been spent just yet. I don't believe so. So that's going to be a big part of Kenny's end game plan here. That's why it's Double Chorus shuffled back into the deck for him. Also has the Fleet Footed, let's not forget. So can see one additional card here before attacking into this Lugia V-Star. More cards is generally mostly very, very good. So we do see the cut there. One more card. Ooh, it is. Sam. Oh, that's a nice card. That's a that. great one. Elizabeth can get some gift energy value here. Goes back up to seven herself. So what options do we have? Yeah, I was going to say, the Lugia does need to hit the discard pile here. That's fairly important. So Fluttermane comes active. And what have we got? Blood Moon Ursaluna will return KO pretty easily here. Put Elizabeth down to a single prize remaining. But then does Kenny have enough to take that final prize? Gusting would do it with your own Blood Moon Ursaluna, but Blood Moon Ursaluna does not KO Blood Moon Ursaluna. Right. So right now, with four damage counters, if Elizabeth takes a KO with Blood Moon Ursaluna, Kenny cannot respond with his, but Elizabeth then could KO Kenny's. <laughs> as long as she could move the Blood Moon Ursaluna in and out of the active of as well. Course, That's another course. thing to bear in mind. I only think Elizabeth has one gift energy remaining in the deck. So it's still an awkward situation. Does she boss's orders a Comfe here instead? No, you can't do that. You have to you have to deal with this Raikou. You just have too few hit points. Maybe you have to attach the gift energy to the Arc. Oh my this is a strange endgame sequence to be honest. Things are getting a little bit wacky. The KO is on the board. This is easy. You don't need any energy on the Blood Moon Ursaluna. It's not like Charizard, the radio yeah. version, where you have to have an energy on there. This is completely free with Kenny having <laughs> taken five prizes, but you cannot use it two turns in a row. You cannot chain this attack. You have to take a turn off. So, so now, it might come down to if there's any jet energy prized. If there's any that Elizabeth can take from prize cards here, that could really change the situation. What does she pick up? Oh, we double didn't. turbo left in the deck. In there the, were uh, in the final there prize. were energy near the top there, Joe. There were definitely I energy. I think there near were the top. some jet energy as well. Let's get a scan of the hand. She's having a look now. There's an energy of some description. It's a double no, turbo. It's missed energy and double turbo in her hand. Either way, it's getting rocks and Kenny's going to get a six card hand. Elizabeth just gets two. And, I mean, we're really looking for Prime Catcher here. Prime Catcher would end the game. That would be yep. super easy. Yep. Blood Moon Ursa Luna KOs something that's brought active. Um, literally anything on the bench would do. It really doesn't matter. So six big cards plus the flower selecting as well. So if we don't see it immediately, there's still a chance that Kenny can find the Prime Catcher to close out this game here. You've got decent odds to hit it. There's a lot of cards being seen. There, there it is, is. card Prime number two. Catcher. And Kenny will win game number one in a very tight, very tight game. And we're off to game number two. The series is not... You might want to open up, read the win for yourself. But no, it looks like she has chosen to go first. She has. And kicks and off with the Capturing Aroma and gets heads. So can grab an Evolution. I am thinking she might be trying to repeat from game one that Fluttermane in the early <laughs> game did put in a bunch of work. Oh, she's got Jet Energy in hand as well. It's possible. Oh, that would be fun. And of course, even if you don't do the Fluttermane, you still want that Lugia going as fast as possible. And you hope that Kenny is not going to just get that turn one seven card in a loss zone. It's possible. It's not likely, but it is possible. I think Elizabeth's hand might not be good enough. Yeah, this is why she's having a debate here. 
She could Ultra Ball for second Archeops, then Archeops away, so then Ultra Ball away that Archeops and grab Carmine to refresh the hand. Yeah, I think she has to go for this line of play. She has a second Ultra Ball in the hand, so she could just grab another Archeops, or she could utilize the Fluttermane now, jet into it, and then still Ultra Ball out Luminion, but you're not getting a second Archeops in the discard pile that way. You're just hoping that this jet energy is disruptive enough. And I think you've laid it out very nicely there, Joe. This is exactly what we're seeing. We did see the Flutter main jet energy into the active. We then saw the Ultra Ball for Luminion, Luminion for Carmine, and we are going to have discard your hand, draw five cards. It's one of the new cards in Twilight Masquerade, not one of the big new cards, mm. but it really is seeing a lot of play in these Lugia decks. They love the discard because you need those Archeops in the discard. So Carmine finding its way into most of these Lugia lists. And despite just playing one copy, Elizabeth has used it turn one both games so far. Yeah, because of the fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's a fantastic option to have. We're going to see a Mincino hit the bench as well. And we'll just pass things over to Kenny. Once again, locked out of the flower selecting <laughs> by Elizabeth. And it's important to note, like we oh, said, game no. one, Kenny was locked out. Oh, but he had Colrus's experiment. That was an option. No. Look Doesn't look this. like we it's have anything. Pass. No cards in the Lost Zone. And that is a big difference from game one. No Chorus's experiment. Here comes Capturing Aroma. And it is Ooh. a heads. And Elizabeth a seems happy with that. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get rid of an Archeops, I think. There's already a Professor's Research in hand for her. So she can discard this second Archeops. So all she needs here is the Lugia V-Star. And yeah. that is going to get her there. This is fantastic. And again, the low hit points of these Pokemon means Elizabeth can just initiate the prize trade with this Fluttermane and keep disrupting Kenny. This could be a quick game, Joe. Yeah, I mean, Kenny is on very few top decks now. Nest Ball is keeping you in the game, but you're falling further behind on the prizes. You need to start top decking Colrus sharpish as the second Archeops is going to get discarded from Elizabeth. Do we see the V-Star here? or any additional bull search. That is what you need. Oh, it's a coin flip, Ross. It's a oh, Tails! That is tails. not going to do it! Oh, What a no. relief for Kenny. That, I mean, that buys a turn. If yeah. Elizabeth gets the Lugia V-Star, she gets the KO this turn and goes, right, you've got Comfey, you're not allowed to flower select, I'm going to KO it next turn, what you got? But without the Lugia, you can't get the Archops. Without the Archops, you can't get the energy. Without the energy, you can't get the <laughs> KO. And that gives Kenny one more turn. Kenny is just having to look at the hand and laugh the situation off. Because <laughs> top deck to Roxanne, that is not live. Nope. Elizabeth can use the Jack now, I believe, in hand to grab some evolutions. Oh, boss's orders as well. This is very smart. Yeah, I like this. Sableye is doing nothing right now with no cards in the Lost Zone. But Comfey is a potential use if you can get Fluttermane out the active. This is a better target. And that was a whole turn, by the way. Elizabeth didn't double attach. She attached. Yeah. Kenny had a whole turn. No! And then she manually attached. It's nothing over. for Kenny. And we are one game each, and we're going to game three. Game three for a win in. Fortunately, Ross, a Lugia V start for Elizabeth. So Kenny will finally be able to turn one flower selecting. <laughs> that would have been starting your only flutter main in game three after what we saw from game one and two. That would be quite harsh. But we are in game three here. And this is big. We've got 17 and a half minutes left plus three turns. Yep. If some, one of these players can, man, can manipulate the game and get all the way to a win, that will give them 19 match points. That is enough for game two. If neither player can, then we are going to be tied and a little bit of work left to do for the pair of them. And that's a nice flower selecting. You get a buddy buddy pop in, so now you can retreat into another comfy and continue to flower selecting here. Get them in while you can, Kenny, because I'm sure Elizabeth will once again look to shut you down early with a flutter main. And we see a two Comfey, so all four Comfey are out now. One's in the yep. active, two the Lost Zone. And I do think Kenny is going, right, I know your game plan, Elizabeth. We've, we've done this twice already. <laughs> Point proven. And it's going to be, can I go turbo? Can I get many flower selecting? Because if you get three in the Lost Zone turn one, then you open up the possibility of Chorus, Lost Vacuum, oh, I'm at seven, and yeah. I haven't used Flower Selecting, and that is a very different game if that happens. Completely the case, Ross. Possibly throwing away, yeah, the Sableye, not that valuable in this matchup, especially with Mist Energy shutting off potential options to Lost Mine. So Kenny's going to utilize a Nest Ball instead from the Flower Selecting. Might want to continue to draw cards. Yep, exactly that with Radiant Greninja here. I think there's a handful of energy 
already in the hand. I think Kenny's already holding on to Colrus for next turn as well. So as you said, it's just really developing as much as possible to get as close to seven as they can this turn. Yeah, and part of me wants to get a Cramorant down as a potential attacker, and part of me thinks, well, that wouldn't have worked in the first two games. Do you really want to use a fence space <laughs> on a Pokemon that might not come out? So there is a concealed card. Ooh. Gets Prime Catcher and an Energy, so that's an interesting option. And, yeah, this is quite nice. Just try and make sure you can get up to... Wait, do we not see the third flower selecting? No, I don't think we have any other switching cards. Oh, that is disappointing. That yeah. makes a big difference, because that means you have to flower select next turn to get to seven. Elizabeth has what I like to describe a Lugia hand. <laughs> this is looking awkward. You might have to Luminion for... Well, you could have Luminion for Jacques. Actually, your hand could have been really good there. You could have Luminion for Jack, then Ultra World away, double Archeops, found Fluttermane, jetted into Fluttermane. That would have been an incredible sequence. Yeah, that could have been quite nice. End of a Fluttermane, have two Archeops in the discard pile. Instead, we are using an Ultra Ball to go and get that Fluttermane. We've got a Luga and a Jet Energy hitting the discard pile. And a Luminion comes down. What are we going to be going for? With so many energy, yeah, you have to go Iono now. Oh, I feel like we had such a great path there with the Jacques. But we've gone for a different direction. I suppose with Read the Wind as an option as well, possibly, that we're thinking about here. But with the early search of Fluttermane, I feel like we're still going to see Jet Energy this turn. Quite possibly. There were, of course, a couple flower selecting, so you know Kenny's got a decent hand, or at least you suspect that he does. So maybe using Iono slow that down a little bit. Here comes the Jet onto the Fluttermane. Here comes... The Iron O, yeah. love it when you can match your sleeves to the supporter you're playing <laughs> at the particular turn. And here comes a new hand of six cards for both players. Elizabeth still needs to get rid of a number of Archeops here. Has drawn into capturing Aroma and Ultra Ball though. So she might be well on her There's way, especially head. with a head flip. That, and she's just said it's absolutely insane. <laughs> it, that's how it can feel with Lugia sometimes. If you just get into enough ball search, she can still make it come together. I mean, when one of your key cards is Capturing Aroma, Capturing Aroma is just, it's a card that makes me too stressed, Joe. <laughs> there are times you really want a basic, there are times you really want an evolution, yeah. and both times you've just got a flip, and it's so awkward, but I do believe that was Ultra Ball for double Archeops in the discard pile. So, all Elizabeth needs, I mean, do we, do we get the Lugia V-Star now ready for next turn? Wow. No, we get him in Chino. I mean, it's a tough call. You're hoping a lot comes out from this Iono. You're really hoping you're disrupting with this Fluttermane. She is just grabbing Minchino. Oh, oh, there's the bundle, though. Iron Bundle is going to force something active. Whatever it wow. is does not have Fluttermane's ability. So that is going to undo all the good work Elizabeth did. Kenny has access to Flower Selecting. Oh, one of Roxanne and a Lightning Energy. You kind of want both of them. Yeah, I think we have to get rid of the Roxanne because there's already Iron Hands EX in hand for Kenny and a number of Switch cards and Colrus. We easily could be taking a three prize turn here if it all comes together. We're going to see the Greninja as well get into the mix. We see additional ball search. That's not too helpful, but we have plenty of flower selecting now unlocked thanks to the Iron Bundle. Kenny working towards that critical threshold of seven in the loss zone. We still need to find some Mirage Gate as well, though, Ross. Yeah, and it is actually kind of awkward. Had you managed to get one more flower selecting last turn, you'd be on five now, and that would be opening up Colrus's experiment just to get you up to seven. You would still need that, though. Hey, we're not there yet. We don't have Mirage Gate. We can nestle out a Raikou V. So if we are at least missing any pieces after this Colrus, you can just take two prizes with Raikou. You're still initiating that race and uh, still representing a lightning Pokemon, and you save Iron Hands for later, which also seems pretty helpful. Yeah, and on the face of it, right, Kenny's got the Raikou and the Iron Hands, like you just said. It feels like you've got some good answers to Lugia, and Iron Hands also a pretty good answer to Chinchino, because Chinchino's trying to take out two prize Pokemon, becomes a two prize Pokemon with the Iron Hands. We haven't really seen that in either of the two games so far, but that is traditionally what these Lost Zone decks want to do a lot in this matchup. But here comes Colrus's experiment. What do we got? Prime Catcher and oh. Mirage Gate. Ross, we could be taking out the only Lugia V here. 
That would be huge. <laughs> taking out Liminia for free prizes? No, who cares about that? Taking out the only Lugia for pre free prizes? Now that is a plan. And he gets rid of Countercatcher as well, because he knows full well he's going to be going up a few prize cards <laughs> by the end of this turn. Yeah, when you're going up by free prizes, counter-catcher becomes a much less enticing option. I think we just have to go with Raikou. I don't think we have enough for the Iron Hands. But still, taking out the only Lugia, it's worth it. This, oh, is, yeah. this is incredible right now. If Wait. I'm only taking two prizes off the only Lugia, giving yeah. my opponent almost nothing to work with... We take those. I'm kind of all right with that. That's a decent, <laughs> yeah, that's a decent uh, eventuality. Wow, what a turn for Kenny. Drawing back into the prime catcher. It was in the previous hand. It got over to the bottom. <laughs> we were able to access it again. You're and kidding. there goes the Lugia. Oh, it's devastating for Elizabeth. She could have found a second Lugia V, went for the Minchino instead. And we do see the Lightning Rondo for the knockouts. And that is always wow. the pro that is always the risk. When you're playing Lugia, you need Lugia V-Star. You have to have that to get your arc ups. If you don't, the deck doesn't work. So we do see enough energy here onto a flutter, maybe that's just yeah. going to get KO'd by Raikou very... Oh, it's already... The energy's already on the board. Here's the thing, <laughs> if you only hand. bench one energy, Lugia, right? that could happen again. The hand is awful. Elizabeth also got rid of a Blood Moon Arsaluna. I'm surprised that wasn't benched, to be honest with you. We're doing 70 thanks to the reduction of double turbo energy, two onto a Confei, but Kenny feels like they're in a commanding position now. Boss is all Oh, he does hand. have the boss onto the other Lugia. And I do think this is probably the game at this stage. Four prizes up to zero with no Lugia on the board. Elizabeth is not going to be getting a Lugia V Star next turn, maybe ever. That Fluttermane is still in range of a Raikou. There's another Lugia. Can we do it again? Probably not, honestly, but there is a pal pad in the list. It is it is possible. And there's Forest Hill Stone in hand for Kenny as well. That was taken off the prize cards. Elizabeth can do essentially her only play here, which is continue to use Hex Hurl. Can Kenny wrap up the game right here with the Forest Seal Stone? Do we have Pow Pad? I'm not sure I see it. You can maybe use Poker Stop and dig towards an item card first. You can Fleet Footed as well. Uh, that's shut off. Yeah, don't yeah, Fleet Footed with a Flutter Main in the active. Certainly not when you're this far up in the game. So. Here's Poker Stop. I like using this before Forest Seal Stone. Yeah. So if you hit the power pad, you yeah. can then just get the boss back, and that will. Uh, the game kind of feels over, but that will make the game literally over. Ooh. We are searching first here. The we are bundle searching won't be game for a unless, game. unless we can use Iron Hands. If we can combine Iron Bundle with um, Iron Hands attacking, that could be an option. Elizabeth going through all the eventualities here of what could possibly win the game this turn. Loving every time we show the crowd people want to show off their plushies. A lot of love here for our favorite Pokemon. Now, oh, here comes the retreat into energy? Iron Hands. You, you don't do this if you don't have enough energy. Yeah. So There's the rod. There's the rod. And we it does... double gate. I'm pretty sure we're there. Yeah, we should be absolutely there. So here comes the double Mirage Gate, and Elizabeth's going to be thinking maybe he doesn't have enough energy, but there's the concession, and Kenny wins two games to one. You can't win with Lugia if you don't have Lugia. Yeah, congratulations to Kenny. What a thrilling third game. Devastation for Elizabeth, unfortunate for her.